May 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 24 from the New Testament. After five days, the high priest, Ananias, came down with some elders and an attorney named Tertullus, and they brought formal charges against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, We have experienced a lengthy time of peace through your rule, and reforms are being made in this nation through your foresight. Most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this everywhere and in every way with all gratitude. But so that I may not delay you any further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. For we have found this man to be a troublemaker, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to desecrate the temple, so we arrested him. When you examine him yourself, you will be able to learn from him about all these things we are accusing him of doing. The Jews also joined in the verbal attack, claiming that these things were true. When the governor gestured for him to speak, Paul replied, Because I know that you have been a judge over this nation for many years, I confidently make my defense. As you can verify for yourself, not more than twelve days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship. They did not find me arguing with anyone or stirring up a crowd in the temple courts or in the synagogues or throughout the day nor can they prove to you the things they are accusing me of doing. But I confess this to you, that I worship the God of our ancestors according to the way which they call a sect, believing everything that is according to the law and that is written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that these men themselves accept too, that there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. This is the reason I do my best to always have a clear conscience toward God and toward people. After several years, I came to bring to my people gifts for the poor and to present offerings, which I was doing when they found me in the temple, ritually purified, without a crowd or a disturbance. But there are some Jews from this province of Asia who should be here before you and bring charges if they have anything against me. Or these men here should tell what crime they found me guilty of when I stood before the council. Other than this one thing I shouted out while I stood before them, I am on trial before you today concerning the resurrection of the dead. Then Felix, who understood the facts concerning the way more accurately, adjourned their hearing, saying, When Lysias, the commanding officer, comes down, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to guard Paul, but to let him have some freedom, and not to prevent any of his friends from meeting his needs. Some days later, when Felix arrived with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. While Paul was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the coming judgment, Felix became frightened and said, Go away for now, and when I have an opportunity I will send for you. At that same time, he was also hoping that Paul would give him money, and for this reason, he sent for Paul as often as possible and talked with him. After two years had passed, Porcius Festus succeeded Felix, and because he wanted to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. God, it seems to be that we are back at the common theme that runs through the Bible. Our ego versus what we should actually be doing, which is glorifying you. We see right here Tertullus uh, buttering up Felix's ego when he comes before his court. And Felix is a well-known, uh, not very nice person. <laughs> he caused a lot of problems in that area. Uh, there was a lot of unrest and um, he was very well known for taking bribes. So all the things that Tertullus was telling him weren't even true. They were just for his ego. And then on the flip side, we have Paul. Uh, not only being honest and upright, of course, but we also have him glorifying you uh, to the point of knowing that it could mean his death. That there wasn't any man's ego before him. There wasn't his own ego before him. Otherwise, he would try to save himself. There was only you, God, and what you expect out of us. It really hurts my heart 
when us as Christians put others before you, put ourselves before you, put the gods of this current world before you. I, I know I do it too. And I'm deeply sorry when I connect the dots that I have actually done that. But isn't that amazing? I actually have to connect the dots to realize I'm doing something wrong. We just do it without even thinking. We glorify others. We glorify money. We glorify positions. We glorify cars. We glorify our significant others. All these things in the world. The world that you made, God. And yet we worship them over you. I know that the only way to set that straight is to constantly be in your word, God, to constantly be in prayer to you and conversation with you. And I always hear people say, yeah, but I have to work for a living. Yeah, but I have to take care of my husband. I have to take care of my kids. I know that you will walk that walk right beside us. That your inclusion in our life in all things is vital. I actually had a bizarre conversation last week about somebody who asked me, um, so, so you went to seminary and then you did this marketing thing. Like, h how did that work? Uh, kind of the separation of church and state. And I'm like, I have one, I've always done marketing ever since I was a little kid, I've done marketing. So that's always been there. Um, and what is absolutely wonderful is all of those things now take a sec uh, back seat to everything uh, that you have become in my world. Uh, it is not marketing and then, oh yeah, when I remember about God. Um, it's not hanging out with friends and going on trips with them. And oh yeah, when I happen to remember God and can fit him in. It's you first, God. And that's what gets so exciting. And it's you first with marketing. It's you first with hanging out with my friends. And it's you first when I'm walking on the beach. It's, it's not one or the other. And this conversation with Tertullus and Felix and Paul definitely is kind of one or the other. But in my life, I'm so blessed because everything is merged. I'm not afraid of letting people know that I'm Christian in business. Or online. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty clear <laughs> about my beliefs online. Um, but God, I just want you to radiate within everything that I do. I want you to be first and foremost of what people see when I do all these things in my life that you have given me the skills to do. God, I want you to be first. And I want to be second. Or third or fourth. <laughs> I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.